the second joint recipient of the 2015 Christopher Heidi Medal is Dr. Scott Morrison, and I invite Dr. Morrison to come up. The interaction of quantum particles or quasi-particles in two dimensions involves a so-called fusion category, which describes the possible outcomes of collision between the quasi-particles. Diagrams describing the fusion category are anal analogous to the Feynman diagrams well known in quantum field theory. Dr. Morrison has made remarkable discoveries, especially in this diagrammatic description of such low dimensional processes. In particular, he has classified the least complicated such theories that mathematics permits. Dr. Morrison, congratulations. I would like to invite you to present your talk. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the honor of this award and thank you all of you for the opportunity to, to speak today. I'm going to tell you uh, today about three of my favorite subjects, uh, topological phases of matter, topological quantum field theories, and higher categorical structures. Uh, these form part of a, a unified story, and I'm going to try and sketch a bit of the big picture. And uh, they're connected to questions in a range of disciplines all across physics and engineering, mathematics, and computer science. Let's get started and uh, say a little bit about what I mean by a, a topological phase of matter. A topological phase of matter is a, a, a new type of matter observed recently in condensed matter physics. And uh, they're, they're typically seen in very exotic situations at extremely low temperatures, extremely high magnetic fields. And they're characterized by, by two particular properties, uh, robust ground state degeneracies and exotic statistics. The, the first of these is just saying that, uh, well, in a typical quantum mechanical system, there's a unique state that has the least energy of all possible states of that system. In these topological phases of matter, on the other hand, it's, it, the, what we see is that there are many different states, all of which have exactly the same lowest energy, and then, then some gap up to the, the state with the next highest energy. And this is a very, very unusual situation. Uh, the exotic statistics, well, uh, typical fundamental particles that we're used to, photons and electrons and so on, uh, by the famous spin statistics theorem, all must be bosons or fermions. This refers to their behavior under rotations by 360 degrees. And the strange thing we see is that the, the quasi-particles, the, the effective particles in these descriptions of topological phases, can behave in more exotic ways beyond, uh, beyond the familiar patterns of bosons and fermions. Now, uh, I'm certainly not a physicist, and I haven't been in a lab for a very long time, uh, but just as pointers uh, for some places where you can see these topological phases of matter in the, in the real world, uh, the spin liquids and the fractional quantum Hall effect are, are the relevant places to look. Okay. So after that very brief talk about topological phases, let's move on to the next part and, uh, and say what a topological quantum field theory is. So uh, a quantum field theory, first of all, uh, in, in very broad sketches, is a physical theory that, uh, well, if you give it the shape of space, the geometry of space, it will tell you all of the quantum mechanical states that are possible inside that space. And it'll additionally tell you how all of those states evolve over time. A topological quantum field theory is a very specific type of quantum field theory. And in fact, when they were first uh, introduced, they were really thought of just as toy models for quantum field theories. And the way that they're very, very special is that they only depend on the topology of space-time and not on the particular geometry. So in particular, the lengths or angles or anything like that in, in space can't affect the possible states or how they evolve in this space-time. Everything just depends on the topology, that is, the number of holes in space or punctures or something like that. So what on earth then is the connection between topological phases of matter and uh, topological quantum field theories? Well, it appears that topological phases are described well by topological quantum field theories. Now, this isn't a theorem or anything like that. This is uh, an, an observational matter. And uh, you can argue about how well they're described by topological quantum field theories. But topological quantum field theories are certainly part of the, the story describing topological phases of matter. Let's move on then to the mathematics and the part that I'm most involved in and the higher categorical structures. Higher categorical structures are deep generalizations of the notion of a finite group of symmetries. Uh, you've already heard uh, something about some of these generalizations, uh, Alan Carey talking about non-commutative geometry and George Willis talking about uh, uh, totally disconnected groups. Uh, these higher categorical, got a higher categorical structures a generalization in a, in a slightly different direction, although quite close to what Alan Carey talked about. 
And just as examples of the, the mathematical terminology that comes up here, we have things like uh, fusion categories and, uh, and modular tensor categories. Now, here, uh, we, we're, we're in a somewhat unusual situation here where the symmetries don't form a group. You can't necessarily apply one symmetry and then apply another symmetry and reverse your symmetries and so on. But nevertheless, these symmetries form a, a similar algebraic structure, uh, which is a little bit more complicated. Uh, and um, and they, they seem to be relevant in, in describing these sorts of physics. So just as examples of the types of mathematics that I think about uh, here, the uh, fusion categories in particular are one generalization of a, a notion of finite group. And for finite groups, we have an extremely rich and successful story that describes how to build finite groups out of smaller pieces. We know what all of those smaller pieces are, and we understand all the ways in which they can be combined into larger finite groups. For fusion categories, we'd like to have an analogous story, but at this point, we just uh, we, we have very little. We have just the beginnings of a theory of how to build fusion categories out of smaller pieces. In another direction, we've seen so far that many examples of, of fusion categories and modular tensor categories belong in big families. They, there are families coming from quantum groups, families coming from finite groups, and families coming from conformal field theories. But at the same time, there are also uh, a small number of examples that don't appear to come from anywhere. They're just completely disconnected from the rest of mathematics and physics at this point. And one of the big questions that we'd really like to understand in thinking about these higher categorical structures is whether we should expect there to be nice classification theorems, everything falling into uniform families, or whether perhaps the sporadic examples will just take over and we'll be left with an enormous mess. At this point in our understanding of, of, of this theory, uh, we, we just really don't know what to expect in the long run. How then are higher categorical structures connected to topological quantum field theories? Well, it seems that every topological quantum field theory is determined by a particular higher categorical structure. In some sense, you can look at the symmetry group, except that it's not a group anymore, of your, quantum field, of your topological quantum field theory, and you'll obtain one of these higher categorical structures. And then it turns out that merely that algebraic data of the, of the, the higher categorical structure determines everything, and tells, in particular tells you all the possible quantum mechanical states from, uh, in that topological quantum field theory. So there we've got uh, the, the, these physical things, the topological phases of matter, a nice physical description of them, and then the underlying mathematics that, uh, that makes everything work. But a really exciting discovery in the last couple of years has been a connection going back the other way, and uh, a, a proposal that perhaps we can design topological phases of matter based on a particular desired categorical structure. You write down the categorical structure, we can come up with a recipe for, for creating a topological phase that would in turn be described by the corresponding topological field theory and category. Now, uh, real quantum engineers, uh, you heard from Michelle Simmons this morning, would probably laugh at me uh, if I described in detail this design process. Uh, it's an optimistic mathematician's dream of a design at the moment. But in principle, at least, in some sense, it's, uh, it might be possible to, to build topological phases of matter to order. Now, why, do we, uh, why are we interested in, in these three subjects and the connections between them? Well, topological phases of matter are really there in the lab, and it's important to understand them. And higher categorical structures are beautiful mathematics that are, have proved very interesting. But there's also a very exciting application uh, that uh, Gus Lehrer alluded to, which is uh, topological quantum computation. So this is a, an, al an alternative model of building a quantum computer uh, that is uh, perhaps very ambitious and has some exceedingly difficult engineering difficulties, but it, it comes essentially from this story. The idea is that we would build hardware based on these topological phases of matter. The, uh, the physics of these, of these topological computers would be described by topological quantum field theories and the mathematical formalism for these computers would be provided by this, uh, these notions of, of higher categories. And just as a, a very brief indication of, uh, of why this is an interesting proposal, uh, it, these topological phases of matter, if you remember at the beginning, exhibit this robust ground state degeneracy. And this is very important because it gives us uh, a collection of quantum mechanical states which are extremely well protected from the environment and we effectively have inherent error correction built into the hardware level of a quantum computer built on this model. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. And are there any questions or comments to Dr. Morrison? Oliver. Would your quantum computer be one of these ones operating then uh, very close to absolute zero with uh, all those engineering difficulties, or? Absolutely, the engineering difficulties are, are extremely severe. I mean, the, the initial proposal was to use uh, the fractional quantum Hall effect, which uh, we, uh, we, we can really see in the lab, 
but requires uh, extremely low temperatures and high magnetic fields, and it's very, very hard to even build the basic devices. Uh, there are a bunch of other proposals now. Uh, people at, uh, or various people are, are working on other related things. But yeah, I, I, it, it's important to emphasize the engineering difficulties here look even more difficult than the engineering difficulties facing the, the, the more usual approaches to quantum computing. Scott, these uh, topological piece of topological insulators currently we're talking about are also falls into that category. Yeah. But you think that the degeneracy is no longer an issue? That's what you're claiming or in, when you're trying uh, to do the topological quantum computation? Because normal quantum computation degeneracy is a major problem. Uh, the decoherence is a major problem. Oh. But what about in these systems? Well, I mean, the, the point is that in these systems, because you have a multiple ground states with almost exactly the same energy, when you can encode your quantum information inside that, that multiple ground state, you're effectively protected from decoherence because of the extremely, uh, the extremely narrow gap in the, in the spectrum amongst the, between those states. Okay. okay, if there are no further questions, could you please join me to thank Dr. Morrison?